Um, actually, it's not. It's Arabic, but it's Pers Persian Arabic letters. Um, and I can I can directly talk to you. <laughs> it's Persian Arabic letters. Um, and it's because my name is um, Iranian. It's a Persian name. And that's because my father is from Iran and my mother is from Germany. And um, I don't really speak Farsi, but I studied a little bit, so I, I read the language, and it's just beautiful. And at one point, I decided to 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 write it this way. Um, at that time, when I chose it for different reasons, um, one was simply at that time I was not very fond of Facebook, and I did not want to be found. <laughs> it's easy when you have this writing, but later on I kept it because I just like it actually. But people keep friends keep like telling me change it please we can't share with you whatever you know so perhaps at one point i will change it yeah that's the answer okay. so i arrived like almost three years ago um end of august 2014 and i started to work here first of september 2014 i'm lecturing at williams university and um, actually I'm here as what is called a lecturer. It's, I'm the lecturer of the German Academic Exchange Service. It's in German Deutscher Akademischer Austauschdienst, um, DAAD. And th so they sent me here and I work f like fully at university. I also work for them. And yeah, and that's how it all like happened actually. And so I'm, I'm lecturing um, at the Vokachu Philologios Cathedra. And I've been like uh, lecturing many different topics and classes, like language classes, of course, but also literature. And yeah. Atash, Atash, ins Feuer springt das Herz. Es schlägt im Rhythmus gelber Flammen und züngelt an der Waage des Gedachten. Es zündelt, stichelt, wähnt sich hoch und tief und heiß. In seinem Lodern Stimmen der Begabung. Sprich, Feuer, sagte ich, verzehr dich nicht so schnell. Es zischelt, zischt und sprüht den Regen Funken in das schwarze Licht. Im Grenzgebiet der Sinne brodeln Dochte. Im Glühen findet jeder seine Glut. Was soll ich sagen? Kamen Worte aus dem Kegel. Verzerrt das Bild, geschwungen, zuckend jede Zunge. Was soll ich schon groß sagen? Da war es wieder, knistern in der Luft und Bläue neben Wallen droht. Sprich, Sprich zu mir in diesen Tagen, ein wenig brennen darf es im Geäst des Wahns. Verstehe, kam es aus den Flammen, ich kenne nichts und bin doch allem zugetan. Sehr interessant, ich stemmte meine Frage. Was tut ein nicht entfachtes Feuer? Wie währt es in der Zeit, wo es noch nicht entbrannt? Latente Feuer nennt man diesen Zustand. Gespickte Stufen ist ein anderer Name, es ist wie Schlummer. Tiefer Schlummer, wie leiser Wind, dem man die Luft entnahm. Unangenehm scheint dir der Gedanke. Wohl wahr, es ist nur manchmal schön, zum Beispiel, wenn man glaubt, ganz einfach zu vergessen und dann doch nie vergisst. Hast du denn keine Angst, aus diesem Schlaf nimmer zu erwachen? Und ob? Der Hauch scheint fern und damit jedes Flackern. Doch ist's kein Schlaf des Schlafens. Es ist höchst wacher Traum. Es ist wie... Zu viele Ruhe vor dem Sturm, dem Feuersturm, der Feuersbrunst. Du sagst es. Ich glaube, ich kann nachvollziehen, was du meinst. Ich griff zum Blasrohr und gab kräftig einen Stoß Atem in die Scheite Holz. Ganz blitzgescheit bist du, so sprach Atasch und lachte. Wenn Feuer lacht, so klingt dies wie aus einer Kehle Rauch. Ich musste husten. Qualm bis meine Augen, ich kniff sie zu, das Feuer sprach mir aus dem Bauch, schoss in die Höhe. Angst hab ich. Wir sagten es im Chor und stutzten. Wie jetzt, du auch? Wieder im Chor. Es war verrückt. Eine geschlagene Weile lang blickten wir uns bloß an. Nur dies, ein Starren ineinander, ein sich Versenken in den Anderen, eine Kuhle. Ein Durchbohren, Hitze, heftig, fast nicht mehr aushaltbar aus dieser Nähe und dennoch wohlig, warm, so warm, wie Balsam für geplagte Sinne, wie Sonnenglut von einem noch mal anderen Stern. Schließlich war es Atasch, der unser Schweigen brach. Er hatte sich gekonnt über ein ganz besonders dickes Holzstück hergemacht und nun machte es Krach und brach, ebenfalls, in viele Kompartimente. 
wie Feuerwaben und wie Asche, die sich zusammenrauft, bevor sie ganz zerfällt. Ha, sagte ich, du hast das Ding geknackt. Na klar, eine Kleinigkeit. Den Rest des Abends blieben wir in Stille. Ich stierte selig leer, ins Glimmende zusammensacken, während mein heller Freund erlosch. Phönix, flüsterte ich, panischer Phönix in uns allen, Flug der Gedanken in der Hitze brut und leuchtendes Verlangen, das stets ins Grenzenlose sprießt und spross. Ja, yeah, that's the, uh, the question. That it's, well, it's, it will be difficult to answer it in very short sentences or we would need time to talk about this. Um, actually, last week, the, the festival Between Tongues I was organizing was all about this, actually, because um, indeed, it's not only, I think, in Lithuania, but in, well, even, even individuals, like individual writers, some of them, we know, like, famous writers. I think even Jonas Mack has said it, like, you should always stick to your mother tongue and only write in your mother tongue. And... Um, what I what I think, uh, it's all a question of how you, um, for yourself, conceive languages and how you work with them, what you do with them, and of course the relation you have to the languages you write in, because I will I, I understand people who say like stick to your mother tongue, you know, because there is a level of, um, I could say in English a level of. Um, it's in French, it's savoir-faire, how you can do something, of how you can practice your writing, of, of the material, how you, can, how you can touch it, how you can work with it, which is um, different in your mother tongue and in languages you might like learn later in your life. Well, some people grow up with two and more languages. Like last week we had Marco Grosse in our um, team, if I can say and he um, grew up with Italian and German. And for my, in my case, it's like um, French became a kind of second life language. I always called it my second life language, which is not a mother tongue, of course. Obviously, it's not, because I learned it when I was, um, when I started to study it, um, when I was already 14, 15 years old. Um, and I was lucky at that time, because I, I, I went to France for, um, what they call a trimestre, it's a three month um, term, like at school. And that's how it all started. I like loved it so much that I, I never, I never um, dropped it. I've never been dropping it since then. Um, I, I live with it, you know, I've been living it for now more than 20 years. So, and it became, it really, it's, it's something so much integrated in my life that I live with it. I live with French and German and, um, and then it came quite naturally that I started to write in French as well, actually. So because both are um, there in parallel or at the same time, I I do not like split them. Well, I split them in my mind. Of course, we can talk about this <laughs> for hours and hours again how how it works in your brain. But I mean, it's they are really there um, together in my life. And uh, yeah, and so I for for my part, we could it's 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 all about like how you conceive languages in a way. I think for me, language has many dimensions and one is um, um, also the next to the written um, form, like in poetry when you, ha you have a written form as well, is the um, acoustic one, like a sound material you can have and, um, and I love that. So I love to, to play around with languages. So I even sometimes start to write in languages that I don't speak a lot <laughs> and um, this comes out from this um, playful approach perhaps to languages as soon as I start I think as it's not only for me as soon as you start to study a language well you're already in touch with it so even if it's with very few words you you have some words and they they come to you you work with them you see them you hear them you try to pronounce them as well as you can um, you have your accent <laughs> when you pronounce them and well then grammar comes into play which is quite tricky you well we all know that it's very tricky for Lithuanian it's also tricky for German for instance it's any you know it um, can be tough for so many different languages but I, I, I like we had a round table last um, week in, in, in the festival and we talked about um, this topic as well and I think, well that's what I said at that time, I, that 
for me it's a bit like uh, languages are a bit like uh, the song of a bird a bird that is like sitting there and having a territory and you know and marking this territory you know um with this song and yeah and i love to to come in and perhaps share some some songs try to, to contribute or whatever I don't know. The language that does not dictate it, but it comes into play very much um, like it, it's intermingled. How you say that? No, don't say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it means that um, for me, um, the content and the form always they go together. And indeed, when I write in German, in f in, or uh, in English or in French, because sometimes, sometimes I write in English as well, um, these writings are very different. I think they are. It's hard to say for me, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm inside the thing, but um, but they are different. And people told me that, like people who read French and German, they also tell me that it's different. Um, not only different because languages are different in themselves, because that's obvious. But um, what what you would suggest with the question is like um, the sounds and in the semantics and these things. To have a role to play in that as well and I think they do but it's quite tricky to answer how they do that you know um, and then perhaps it would be important to go into its into texts and to look at them and see how it works you know? but, um, well the process is, is not easy and it's I'm still going on and I have to say that I'm very um, sad that I did not have enough time while being here um, like for studying, really going deep into the language. So what you saw on Facebook were just um, attempts, <laughs> attempts to write, you know, um, like, as I said, as soon as I get in touch with language, I, I try to do something with it. You know, it's it's like, it's, it's an encounter. I think I always encounter, it's, I always meet languages, you know, or, or they come to meet me or whatever. And I love their sound, so I also love to explore um, the sound of Lithuanian. I actually said, to friends that when I, I'll be gone in July, um, I will miss the sound of the Lithuanian language, even if I don't really speak the language. But I'm so used to that now. So my ear is already used to, to a kind of um, melody or, you know, words in the air and things, you know, that I will miss that a lot. And um, yeah, so what you saw, I'm, I, tried, I tried to experiment and to practice just a little bit what I learned. But it's I I feel like very well I just, really a beginner an absolute well an absolute beginner I have a little little level now you know but um, yeah I yeah well I would say three only well only well like many people in Lithuania for a different language than I do you know because I uh, for me it's German French and English um, and I read more. I can, but depending on the degree of difficulty of the text, of course, I can um, read some Italian texts, Spanish texts, and even Portuguese, because I studied um, Romance languages in Germany, so that was like the beginning. I studied different topics at university, but the very beginning was like Romance languages, German language, and history of art. It was the very beginning. And when you do that in, in Germany, you, you like um, study you, you really study all of these languages a little bit and mostly people then choose one, you know, which, which was French for me very quickly. But I, I studied to the others a little bit and I, I can't read um, Romanian. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Latin and a Roman language as well, but I can't, can't read that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I once spoke Italian a little bit, so I, I still have some knowledge my subconscious or something so i think i could bring it up like again rather quickly if i wanted you know. but these are really like well like reading languages or for reading purposes so yeah one i felt the leaves color against the sky and a crowd crossed miles away in fear of tomorrow's eagerness Two, 
the dream which dreamt itself over and over again while the clouds passed in laughter. Niekada nesibaigintis srebiksas. The dream which dreamt itself over and over again while the clouds passed laughing about. The dream which dreamt itself over and over again while the clouds passed laughing about. The dream which dreamt itself over and over again while the clouds passed laughing about. The dream which dreamt itself over and over again while the clouds passed laughing about. The dream which dreamt itself over and over again while the clouds passed laughing about. The dream which dreamt itself over and over again while the clouds passed Hare decided to fall asleep like bear, came never again out into the forgotten rain. Yeah, so there are between um, tongues, tap, between tongues, yeah, between tongues, tap, Kalbu um, festival. So it took place last week, it was over one week from the 15th to the 20th of May within the first week of the Poesius Pavasaris. And um, it happened because uh, when, before arriving in Lithuania, I already had the idea to do such a thing, actually. So, and I had the idea together with a friend of mine, um, Uri Lassac, and she's um, from France. And um, we, at that time, we had just a very vague idea of what it could be. It was not yet what it then became over the time but um, and at, at, a, at a time I started to do it on my own because already I was so far away and it was too complicated to do it like you know she's living close to Toulouse and so um, what it mainly is the idea behind it was like what I already mentioned that um, I wanted to celebrate multilingualism in poetry in, in, in literature, literature literary writing and as I practice it myself but I, I as I know that I'm not the only one so um, there are not many, but some uh, poets who do that. And, um, and then, of course, the idea was to bring together um, Lithuanians who do that with people from abroad. Um, Aurelia was meant to come, but she had to cancel because of health problems in her family. Um, so that was a pity, but um, that's how it goes. And so in the end, I had, we had as guests uh, Marco Grosse from um, Germany and Italy. So that's the, the poet I already mentioned who writes in um, Italian and German. And um, myself, I was there um, among the poets, of course, from abroad. And then we had two Lithuanian writers, um, Zygimantas Kudirka and um, Rutas Brodolskite. And they both um, work, well, in Lithuanian, of course, and English. And it was, and then we had translators, um, four translators. Um, I tried to mention all the names. It's um, Ramune um, Brunzeite, right? Um, Ramune Brunzeite, um, Ostea Merkevichute, um, Markus Roduna, and Danus Gintalas. Gintalas? Gintalas? I don't know where. Gintalas. Yeah. And um, it was a beautiful experience. We had um, first uh, three days of translation workshop, which was very intense and really very good atmosphere. I love that. We did it at the Writers' Union. Um, so actually the whole thing was like organized by the Writers' Union and financed by the German Embassy here in Vilnius. Um, and I, I have to thank them really because um, they welcomed us um, with this project. And. Yeah, so we had these very intense three days working together where we create a kind of network between our group um, through translations um, and not only translations as Zygimantas uh, Kodirka, I'm always, um, um, yeah, when I have the name, the name is so long. Um, so Zygimantas um, was doing remixes um, of some texts. Um, that's why I gave him some English texts of mine as well, because um, he's not a translator. And... Um, so he, he was doing this, and Ruta also, like, somehow she translated, but she, but she also took one text of mine, I think, and, and wrote some kind of answers or responses or whatever to, to some texts. And now, at the end, um, uh, well, I, I, I gathered all the texts, I, they, the, the, the participants sent them to me, and we have many texts now, and there will be a, a beautiful, I think, beautiful publication um, in autumn to come, so we'll let you know when, it, when it's ready where we um, bring all these texts together um, in five different languages, which is Lithuanian, um, English, German, French, and Italian. And yeah, and then on, on Thursday, last Thursday, it's one week ago, we had two um, workshops, well, one workshop and one discussion. I saw it was a creative writing workshop 
um, all the well the four poets invited um, we moderated that together and it was a beautiful experience as well because we had like students um, who wanted to write in in different languages and there was even a colleague of mine um, Maria Sebastia who came in she's from Spain she brought in some of her students and then they worked even in Spanish you know because the idea was really to to make them feel the like, well write uh, poetry it can only be in one language if they want or do um, try to, to translate themselves, you know, and um, it was really nice. And then there was the round table, a public discussion, um, where Italian friend of mine did the moderation, Davide Castiglione, he's also a colleague of mine at university and a poet himself. And we had a beautiful discussion, um, actually really um, sitting around a table, <laughs> a real round table, because we um, very spontaneously transferred um, the event from the university room to a cafe <laughs> and that was beautiful. Then we had one day on Friday um, we came together and I had invited a musician, it was Michael Greville, um, he's from France and he lives in Brussels in Belgium and he came over with two beautiful instruments he's playing. One is the lute, the medieval lute and the other one is called Cetera Oscura and um, it's a Greek, let's say, instrument. <laughs> Concrete. And it's um, very beautiful what he did because he contributed with them um, very, like he's very much into early music, like from the Middle Ages, and modern contemporary music. And um, he contributed with them um, pieces by um, Guillaume de Machaut, for instance, or a, an anonymous piece from the end of the 14th century. And also um, two arrangements he did, and well one is not an arrangement, and one is a vocal piece, he's also singing, so he's a singer himself, so he sang a song of John Cage, and he also arranged for the um, Cetera, he arranged um, a composition by Morgan Feldman, which is beautiful as well. And so we had a kind of rehearsal day on Friday, the four poets and Miguel, and on Saturday we did the reading um, at the Writers' Union again. It was, I think, well, for us it was really a very intense and a, a wonderful week. Yeah. Well, what you can feel when you, when you do this kind of work I did, you don't feel it directly. Because, I mean, you have your classes, you're lecturing, so you don't feel directly. But what you, what you feel, of course, is um, within university there is much... Um, well, they, they are reforming the systems as you mentioned, and, um, and there was, was much um, discussion going on, and uh, debates, and meetings. Um, I, for my part, did not actively participate, because all in Lithuanian, so um, I could not, you know, but I was always like briefed by my colleagues about what was going on. And so, yeah, people talk about it, of course, and, um, and you get to know it as a, as a stranger, as a foreigner, you, when, well, as you went, when you work there anyway, it's, it's, in this sense it's touching you as well, but um, of course I was not um, involved directly in any of these debates, you know, all these discussions, but um, yeah, there's, there are many, many things going on at the moment and um, we'll see what the future brings for, for Lithuania. Yeah. That's a very tricky question <laughs> because um, yeah, I heard about what you what you were saying, like the situation, how it is, um, and how many people feel about even the word refugees. If I say, if I say, you know, because it's a word, you know, it's a word, and behind all words, words like these, especially, are is a reality, and so when you have the word refugee, there are people behind. Many people, many individuals, many individual lives, and um, I can perhaps quickly just tell about um, some experience I, I had in, in Lithuania, which were not always easy for me to, to live, because um, as coming from Germany, you know, you know, everybody knows that there were many people arriving, well, in general, but especially in autumn 2015, um, that was when the semester started, and I had to teach um, again in September and 
there were so many people in, in Vienna, in Austria, at the, at, the, at the station, the railway station, and then they moved on to Germany because the borders opened, you know, so they could move on. And at that time, and even later, I had some experiences with people, like people I, I knew, but mostly also people I, I just met, like people selling things in shops or something, who when they heard or when they knew that I came from Germany, was like, they were like, um, how to say that, you know, they were sad for me and for Germany, for what happened. So if, as if I already agreed with them, as if, you know, like they were deploring it, you know, like, and, and it was very strange for me because they I heard sentences like, oh, now you can't go to Germany any, anymore because um, Berlin, for instance, you, it's not any longer what it used to be, it completely changed and, and you know, and, and then when I asked, but when have you been there last time? It has like 20 years ago or something, you know, so I said, but you, you even don't know what's really going on at the moment. So it, they, people, I think they have like fantasies, they have very, um, well, they have their images in mind, what they think the situation is in Germany, you know, and which is frightening them, you know, even if, they never try to find out if this is true what they think and or even to find out where this image come from what you know they have in mind because we all have this in mind and it's important to to not forget it that it's um, a kind of vision you might and and, and 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 words evoke visions you know so in german we have for instance like words like flüchtlingswelle which is a um, how you say, a wave of refugees, you know, as a kind of tsunami or, you know, going over the country and things like that. And um, I, I try, when I speak with people, I try to, to, to tell them that it's always good to be careful with one's own, you know, ideas, perhaps like fixed ideas um, you might have. And about policies, you know, in Lithuania, because what I, what I heard is that uh, refugees don't, many of them do not want to come here even you know so um, it's uh, then it's all I, I see also see it on facebook groups like there are groups where people discuss it there's a group foreigners in vilnius i love that group it's a great group by the way because it's um it can be very give you know it's, it's you, you can ask questions you get good answers help you know but sometimes people come up with topics which are a bit like you know difficult like this one with the refugees and then you see uh, reactions it's all about money it's all about you know okay people say they don't want to come because they want to go to sweden because they get their, their money more money there you know and it's um i understand like fears i can understand pe people's fears you know but as you know for instance my father is from iran you know and so he's like for them, for these people who always think of refugees and Muslims in blocks, you know, he would be a Muslim and then he's like, for them, bad, you know, like, and it doesn't work like this at all, you know, it's just, it's really, a, I don't want to say stupid because it's mean to say that, but it's a very narrow-minded approach to things because my, my father, for instance, I mean, okay, he comes from a mainly Muslim country, but he's not a Muslim, he's not practicing at all, he, he never did. In his whole life so <laughs> he's just Iranian okay so there are you know so many people with so different backgrounds and um, the important thing is how to meet people how to encounter them how to speak to each other you know, how to find a way to communicate so. Gott du hast Menschen verschieden gestaltet wo setztest du Schranken um uns zu trennen nicht leicht lässt du verbunden uns sein. Wenn wir auf Höhen des Machtkampfs die Brüder nach unten nicht zerren, hassend den eigenen Hass, endlich zu lieben verstehen, löschst du die Hölle und schüttest du Seligkeit hier schon auf Erden und das Zerwürfnis zerbricht wie einst in Babel der Turm. Lange schon leiden die Völker Europas, den Ländern der Erde knüpft aus gemeinsamem Leid bald schon das bindende Band. Lehre die Völker gemeinsames Ehren und trennendes Achten, so wie du Sichelmond liebst, Kreuz und den jüdischen Stern. Hart trennst du Mütter von Kindern und Frauen von Männern, dass morgen wieder die Menschheit begreift, wie sie zusammengehört. Ja, 
uh, you you heard about my well you perhaps read about or even read the article um, about um, Herman Adler I wrote I recently wrote and it is got, got published in in the states so I wrote about um, a poet uh, whose name is Herman Adler um, because I kind of rediscovered him of course well he's a kind of forgotten poet um, from Germany he was a German Jew or Jewish German and um, He's a survivor of the Vilna Ghetto, not only even the, the Vilna Ghetto, because he then um, uh, went on on his way to, well, he tried to find sanctuary, like to be safe. He uh, went to Poland as well. And, well, anyway, it's a long, it, I, I will not tell everything now about his, his journey through Europe during the, the time of the Shoah. But um, I discovered him. Um, thanks to a colleague of mine who, when I arrived in Lithuania, worked at the EHU, the European Humanistic University. And he's a historian himself, he's not that much into literature, but he came across the name of Hermann Adler while doing research um, in um, uh, the, the Lithuanian the prison at Lukisko, actually. And so he he saw this name, he understood that it's a, he's a poet, and then he talked to me, because I, he knew that I am very much into Jewish studies. And so I picked that up and I followed the trace. And I um, I did several like conferences about him. And Hermann Adler is um, very interesting because he wrote in German. Um, and he did it on purpose. He like chose to write in German, which is his mother tongue. And um, he actually, when he wrote, he meant like he he it was he was he he addressed of course the Jewish readers but also like all other readers and Christian people from Christian um, countries and Arthur is very interesting because he's um, he's like he's a witness you know he gives testimony direct testimony of what what was happening in the ghetto. And at the same time, he tries to come up, which is really remarkable, he tries to come up with a kind of vision of reconciliation um, of all peoples, like, after the war, which is in our times. And so, um, if, his, if, like, commemoration is an encounter as well, so if you, like, commemorate something, you, you meet um, what happened, actually or even the one person that tells you about what happened. If this is true, and I think it is true, then it's always good to go back to people like Hermann Adler and read his poetry um, Yeah, as what it is, a grain of, 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 even of hope, which is crazy to say, but a grain of hope um, uh, in this madness and atrocity, in, in among these atrocities that happened at that time. So it's, it's, it really, I think it's helpful to go back. To, to this poetry, and I hope actually that it will be translated into Lithuanian. I had another project <laughs> for that, but as I'm leaving, I, I think I won't be able to finish that. But perhaps, perhaps there will be possibilities, and I would be very glad to do that, to, um, to even from um, far away, you know, um, assist and make that happen, that, that his, his books, or at least one of his poetry books, like, gets translated into Lithuanian, I think, because it belongs to Vilnius. Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know yet. Um, well, I, I have some, some ideas, of course, and there are some things going on. I will, as a, as a DAD alumna, which is like the one who got a scholarship from, from the DAD, I, I have the right um, to get another little scholarship now right away after this one, after the three year, years in Vilnius. So I will go back and um, will lecture a little bit at a, a German university. Um, but that's only for one semester, so it's like ba basically three months, you know. And then I will, I will have, I will have to apply for a job. Um, my dream would, of course, be to find a similar job of what I did here, actually, because I loved it a lot. I liked the variety of of this of this work, you know, because you are working with people. I love that. You, it's it's relevant, you know. It's 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 something really good for you and for the for anybody else so and and then you well you can write you can read you can do research you can go out into the city with them cultural projects and i love this 
variety actually and it would be great to find something similar but I don't know if I can I can make it <laughs> so we'll see well I will of course come back and 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 um, um, like travel go go back come back to to Vilnius and not only Vilnius but Lithuania and and and, and I, I I actually plan to at one point come back and travel th more like through the country because I did not have that much time for that. I went to some places, of course, you know, like Klaipeda and um, and uh, Krantenida, you know, and, and um, Kaunas, Droskininke, you know. But um, there are many more, more, many more places to discover and many more things to do. So, yeah, it would be great. And it would be great, of course, to come back also with more projects to realize here, like in the world of literature, poetry, translation, things like that. Yes, I, I think so. I really think so. I, it's, it's always like, again, difficult to say, you know, in words um, um, to express it, like how it changes you, some experience like that, you know. But um, every place where you live changes you in a way, you know. Um, and Vilnius is very strong. It has so many, for me it's a palimpsest, it has so many layers um, in, in the, of history, of course. And you see it also in, um, at, with the buildings, you know, with architecture and the streets. And um, I, um, I was lucky because I, for my, I think, I feel myself like um, lucky because I uh, live directly the, at, at the place where the great synagogue stood. So when I did the research on Hermann Adler, you know, it, it was all it was all there actually. So it was like inspiring, but also urging. There was some something you know I had to do, and um, and then it, it's really a palimpsest in the in the sense of you you you. Well, I loved it from the very beginning, but I think that the love was like getting deeper and deeper over the time. Um, when I when I when I lived here, so it's I don't know how to say it's um, the beauty of, of of Vilnius like unfurls you know um, over the time I think so it's really something to explore I, I, that's what I love about Vilnius there are so many things to explore it's it's a kind of never ending um, search you know. And for me, it's the city of angels. So <laughs> I, I, it really is. No, it really is, but not in a touristic way, you know, or in a kind of. Um, it, 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 it's more in this, in this Jonas Merkers way of thinking, you know, that um, that you, you feel like something is going on um, between 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 the streets, the lines, the the houses, the buildings, you know. Um, and that's not, um, I mean, something special about Vilnius because I traveled to Tallinn, I traveled to Riga, and I like them, you know. But I, but of course, well, I did not live there, so I can't really compare. But, but I, I really love Vilnius very much. So. La poésie commence toujours en silence et y retombe. Et les voix qui la portent sont elles-mêmes bougies et souffrent. Vivre poétiquement des moments d'espace d'échange silencieux.